one. Yep. Hi everyone. Thanks for joining us here for morning meeting. Um, I'm Kristen, the executive director at the center, and I'm here with um, sweet Grace. We call her Gracie, and she is our Broadwing Talk ambassador. Um, so we'll let people join. Please say hi, where you're from. Um, we know that, and we're so honored that a lot of you guys are using this as part of your at-home curriculum. So we definitely welcome any questions that you might have. Um, so welcome everybody. We're sitting outside today in the sun. We're right outside of our current building at the center and Gracie's a little chatter. So you'll be able to hear um, some of their sweet sounds that they make. Um, so Gracie, as I said, is a female Broadwing talk. Um, she came to us in 2006. Um, she had been, she had actually flown into a trailer um, and she was in our intensive care room. It was one of her first solo flights out of the nest. Um, so she was a young bird um, and she suffered soft tissue damage, um, permanent injury to her right wing, um, and also some permanent um, neurological damage, which impacts her balance. Um, at the end of this, we'll go into her house so you can see where she lives into yeah. her enclosure. Gracie Abby, who's three, says hi from Hampton. Hi, Abby. And Tristan, Gabe, and Chloe say good morning from Sanford. Good morning. And Molly and Deacon say hi from down the street. Hello. And Linda's wondering if Grace is okay now. She is okay now. So, yeah, so you'll see, um, whoop, there's, there's, she's showing you some of her <laughs> balance issue. You'll see some of her um, feathers are broken, um, and that's from, um, from her balance issues, and so she does break her feathers more than a wild one would. Um, they molt typically in the summertime, so when they don't have to, um, it takes a lot of energy to replace all of those feathers, so they take advantage of warmer weather where they're not using energy just to even keep their own body heat up. Um, so she looks pristine and beautiful. Grace, Kristen, Kristen says that you are beautiful. She is. And we'd like to say hi to Joe, age eight, in Londonderry. Hello. And good morning from Gabriella in Northampton. Colin and Rebecca from Portsmouth. And let's see, Adrian from Reading, Mass. And yeah, we had a question about our wingspan. Gracie's, our joke is that, um, hi Xander in Plymouth. Her name is Grace, but she's not really graceful, mm -hmm. but she's an eternal optimist and she's absolutely perfect in our eyes. Yeah, so their wingspan is not, um, not very large, which is always surprising. Um, it's probably, I'd say like two and a half to three feet. You guys are so good with these questions where right have to get um, more exact with that but you know when they're flying in the sky they look so huge um but see i think it's cool to see a broadwing talk up close because they're actually Let's pretty pretty petite closer. um she's got you know very strong talent she certainly hunts her own prey um but they stand as you can see really Thank only you. About a foot tall, and their their wingspan, um, like we said, is really about two and a half feet. Um, and to get back about the the questions about her feathers, um, and if she's okay, she is okay. Um, that's just feather damage. Otherwise, she's you know perfectly fine. Um, so she's got kind of a bad haircut going on, right. but. Um, but after she molts um, until usually about February, March, um, she looks she looks really beautiful and great. Her feathers are pristine, but um, towards the end, you know, towards as she gets closer to when she's gonna molt again, things start looking a little a little um, a little disheveled. Exactly. But um, but we provide sanctuary um, for permanently injured ambassadors and so our um our standards are can the bird can the animal get around safely can they have a good quality of life um and in some cases as long as they're 
attitude is okay. They like being around us. Um, you know, we don't necessarily need the, the bird to look perfect. Um, mm -hmm. So we are, we're okay with Gracie, just how she just is. Just how she is. Hi, Xander in Plymouth. And hi, Addie Miller. <laughs> Abby's wondering if Gracie has any teeny tiny babies and Kristen oh, is asking how question. old she is. Yeah. So, so Gracie came to us in 2006. Um, so she's going on 14 years old this year. Um, and to get back to the original story, you know, she was in the, in our intensive care room. She came in as a first year bird. So she was probably five months old when we got her. Um, she, we knew that she had permanent neurological damage and the soft tissue damage, so she would not be able to be released. And I actually was honored enough to be there um, with Gracie and treating her when she first came in. And so um, we always judge temperament um, for patients that might become ambassadors because they're non-releasable. And I remember taking the first walk with Gracie around the building um, just to see like, how would she do on our glove? And um, she just walked around the building with me and stayed on the glove um, just how she is now. And we knew that she would be just a perfect wonderful. ambassador. And so she loves being a mom. Mm -hmm. Gracie was born to be a mother. Um, so she proudly lays eggs every year, even though they're not fertilized. Um, she loves when we can give her nesting materials. Um, she gets very broody, which people probably observe um, in your chickens at home. And so she loves to stay on her egg. We let her stay on that egg, even though it isn't fertilized, um, just so that she can have the enrichment of going through natural um, behaviors and anytime um, we get baby broadwings in Gracie is involved in some way um, in their upbringing and care and Absolutely. so she's kind of in semi-retirement because she is an older broadwinged um, but she has helped to raise um, probably over 20 broadwinged hawks that came in as babies and she was a foster mom for them. Sometimes we think loved. they come back to visit because we're right under a flyway. Yeah. Hi Gus and Juno in Portland. Um, Chloe says that she is so cute. We agree, <laughs> Chloe. Um, Brendan, she's not missing her right leg, but you, she might, it might just be in a shadow for you. Um, how old is she? Hi, Kesh. Oh, Beth had a friend just typed to us. Geffen from Dover, this is uh, Grace. She's our Broadwing Talk ambassador. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Liam and Luke and Franklin Mass. Hi, Lakin and Lorelai up in Owl's Head. Ooh, Ooh Molly was wondering um, how many eggs they can have. So they typically have, um, let's see, one to four eggs. And um, of those eggs, they incubate them for 28 days, so almost a full month. Um, and they, of those eggs, the number that can hatch successfully and be raised um, to fledge from the nest is, is usually more like two. So they kind of have half um, percent success rate from there. Um, See, so yeah, they can lay something. up to four eggs. Usually two guys leave the nest. Um, sometimes it can be three or even four, um, depending on how seasoned the parents are, how, how good they are being parents and also the resources that are available to feed the babies awesome. in the habitat that they're in. And Great Harmony, question. yeah, Harmony, she can walk by herself, although she's not very graceful, but that's okay. Erin asks um, how many calls she makes and what do they mean, but I'm going to crank through a few more. Mm -hmm. um, and then followed by what does she eat? Mm -hmm. Oh, Ed just commented. Levi says, hi, Mom and Gracie. Aww. And Caitlin's walk, watching. And Beth, she is about, she's coming into year 14. Mm -hmm. So on the calls, this is, a, this is a really fun time to be listening for Broadwing Talked Calls. Um, you'll see that her feet are naked of any feathers. Um, and so, and, and again, even though, <laughs> even though we think of them as being... Um, you know, huge hawks. Um, they're pretty, pretty petite, um, especially compared to like a red-tailed hawk or a great horned owls that live here year round. Um, these feet would not really be big enough to punch through the snow and ice crust. Um, they are 
we have to check with um, Gracie has a heat lamp she has a heated yurt um, she has a heated perch we have to make sure she doesn't get frostbite on her feet um, living with us year-round we do have to take her in um, during really cold temperatures so usually broadwing hawks are in Florida all the way um, to South America um, all the way down to really Peru some of Peru. the broadwing hawks um, have a 10,000 mile journey um, during their migration. And so they're starting to come back right now. So this is a perfect time to be introducing you guys to Gracie. And they have a really cool high pitched um, call that's identifiable. And she, oops, sorry, honey. She starts um, doing her calling. She just started really this week. Um, so please listen for this call. It goes, she says, oh, that was good. <laughs> She's looking like, for it. She's like, is that a friend? <laughs> Gracie welcomes everybody when they drive in in the yeah. morning in the spring with that exact call, which is really, really She's cool. Me that call, like. She says, that's right. <laughs> Oh, good morning, Caitlin. Caitlin says, good morning. Um, Harmony is wondering where she stays and does she have a home? Well, actually, at the end of this, go and check that out. Mm -hmm. Beth wonders if she's going to live much longer. And Gavin asks what other bird species she's related to. Ooh, that's a great question, Gavin. I love that. Um, okay, so, yes, Beth, she's going to live much longer. <laughs> that's um, the expectation. Always, yeah. She hopefully will be with us until she's 20 if not a little Maybe bit 25. more, um, 2025, um, in the wilds, they, because they migrate, um, because they have to deal with, you know, we may have outlawed DDT and pesticides and insecticides, um, to a point in our country. Um, we always tell people to be aware of what's used on your fruits and veggies, um, because, we have a lot of birds that live here um, in our region that we consider our birds. Like, those are our broadwing hawks, they're back. Um, you know, those are our hummingbirds, they're back. But those birds actually winter in places um, that still can use um, pesticides um, and insecticides and rodenticides that are um, poisonous and lethal, really for a lot of our migratory bird species. So when you're shopping and um, taking a look at what's been used on your, um, on your food, you know, it's not only for like what you're putting in your own body, but it's also um, what our, our environment and our favorite species are exposed to. So yeah. in the wild, um, their lifespan is a lot shorter. I think it's around 10, um, seven to 10 years because they do have a dangerous lifestyle and they're they're going um, to a lot of places that have a lot of different regulations. It's fun to think that Gracie has a, a dangerous lifestyle because she's so yeah, right. sweet. <laughs> um, so Gavin had asked what species she's related to. So she has a beautio, which is the red-tailed hawks. And Abby was wondering um, if she plays with any toys. And then maybe we can just a few people joined late. So maybe we can do a recap of who she is and how old yeah. she is. So we're sitting here with Gracie, our Broadwing Talk ambassador. She's been with us since 2006. She suffered um, a permanent wing and balance issues um, after she flew into a trailer, one of her first flights out of the nest. So she's going on 14. Um, she is a hawk in the Budio family. So around here we have Budios and we have Excipiters. The Budios have those stout, um, thick feet, shorter um, legs and shorter toes. They have, um, you know, broad wings beyond our broad wing. The red-tailed hawks have wide broad wings and the red shoulders have wide broad wings. So we think of it's the broad winged hawks, the red shouldered hawks, and the red-tailed hawks in our region that are Budios. The excipiters, so we think of them as the type B. The Budios are the type B personality where they're a little more mellow. Um, they do the mellow. sitting, um, sitting and dropping like hunting style. So they're, you know, on a perch or, or even in the sky soaring overhead they're catching animals that are on the ground so she would eat mice voles snakes salamanders frogs um guys that are more on the ground and then our excipiters are the um, sharp shinned hawks the um Cooper's there's a robin hawks. who's challenging <laughs> yeah there he goes <laughs> 
Gracie. Um, she says, no, I'm, I'm good. Sharp shinned coopers and goshawks, and those guys are the type A's. So the occipiters are the ones that, you know, fly really fast through the forest. Um, there's a, a really cool, you can Google like a, a webcam on the back of a goshawk that's flying through the forest at 60 miles per hour, maneuvering through all the trees and limbs, um, just incredible. And those guys tend to be eating more birds and catching on the wing. So awesome question, you guys. Absolutely. Um, so Don, no, her, she didn't heal um, effectively from her injuries. So she has been living with us for almost 14 years in sanctuary. Um, but she lives a pretty happy lifestyle. And just a little more about our organization. Um, we know we're so glad that these Facebook lives, um, you know, we're being joined and we're creating a community. So um, some people might be very familiar with our work. Some um, this might be brand new. We might be brand new to you. So we are um, a, a conservation medicine organization, which means that we treat um, up to 2,500 injured and orphaned wild animals every year of 190 different species. And we also do um, about 400 environmental education programs at schools, libraries, senior centers, um, on site each year. And we have 28 um, ambassadors. Um, so those are our um, guys that are permanently injured. Um, they're not able to survive in the wild. Um, our goal is always to release animals back to the wild. Um, they're much happier there. Um, uh, although we create a sanctuary that tries to mimic their environment, we take into account their disabilities, we give them natural foods and enrichment. Um, but so Gracie has permanent injuries that prevent her from being able to survive on her own in the wild. Lagan would like to know if you need to cut her nails because she's not in the wild. And Blake would like to know if she can still fly a little bit. Um, she really just does short jumps. Um, you'll, we'll see. She has the most customized enclosure <laughs> of any ambassador. True. Wait till you guys see it. Um, and we, that's a great question about her talons um, and her beak too. So, you know, our dogs and cats, you have to clip their nails. And um, with our wild animals, certainly their talons and their beak just keep growing. And we, we try not to um, because to restrain them, to have to dremel the beak and, and clip and trim um, is stressful on them. So instead we try to give them natural substrate perches that are um, mimic where she would be in the wild, the hard rough bark. We give her some stones so that she can do her own um, spa care. But we do keep an eye on how long things are getting and every once in a while we'll do a quick beak trim or um, talon trim. That's an awesome question. It is. Gracie Angela says you're very cute. <laughs> she says I know, right? She's so so sweet. Absolutely. She, love she bug. just emanates love mm -hmm. and gentleness um, and acceptance. When she looks at you, she cocks her head and really looks at you. Like we're always like Gracie can see our, our soul mm -hmm. and she accepts it for whatever it is. She's a really special bird. You want to give him a tour of your house? Yeah. What do you think? And just, just a quick note about habitat. Um, so they, they're returning right now from South America. Listen for those calls. These guys really like a deciduous forest. Will you do the call again? Yeah. So it's, <laughs> I think you got the approval. I she, yeah, I think she thinks it's okay. Yeah, she was like, wow, you've been, really, you've been working on that, girl. Nice job. <laughs> um, so listen for that call, but they really love, um, obviously, she's not really um, camouflaged for pine or hemlock necessarily. Um, they really love a mixed um, deciduous forest. That's their preferred habitat. And um, they'll nest in the fork or the crotch of a tree. They do build their own stick nests. Um, now is a good time before the leaves come back to try to um, spot any nests that might be on your property. And then when you're hearing those guys, you know, go look at that nest um, that you had spotted earlier and maybe you'll discover a barred wing cocktail on your, on your property. That would be um, exciting. And just one thing I love, um, is this my, oh, I grabbed the wrong one, but some field guides. Um, my favorite is Peterson's um, 
guide, field guide for birds. There's also the Nat- National Geographic Society. I think this one's from the 80s. <laughs> but, well still loved, good. but still yeah, so good. It's earmarked. Um, and then uh, Sibley's has a really great one, too. Um, so that's a really fun activity as we're all... Um, in close quarters and yeah. spending more time in And Cornell nature. Lab of Ornithology is a great online, resource yeah. as well online. Okay. So I'm going to jump. We're going to walk down here so we don't fall. Yep, you got it. It's a little muddy, guys. So you can see we've had to adapt up here too. We're now accepting animals into our clinic, but we're accepting them under different rules. I'm gonna go ahead and walk ahead of Gracie so that I'm not in her way. Hi, Molly, she is so cute. We'll navigate our snow that's still here. Actually, while we're here, Mr. Bertram, what you doing? This is Bertram. We'll be seeing him shortly. Right, friend? What do you think? Gracie's going back in. We're going to go see her house. And along this way, Lucy is sleeping, I believe. I know she's over bumpy ground. She's allowing me to... Give her a little support. Give her a little support. <laughs> Let's see. Lakin, does she ever want to get away from people? Well, if she does, you'll see in her enclosure, she can get, I can get that if you want to. Um, she's able to get away um, from anybody she wants, but usually she sits right in the front with people and really likes to visit. Mm-hmm. So we'll go in and get a little behind the scenes tour, guys. So this is actually our education hall where we were getting ready for Make Way for Ducklings, but plans change and that's fine. So now we'll go and see where Gracie lives. This is actually really pretty. So watch with the confidence, you guys, that she runs up her. <laughs> You know, when we're learning to sleep on beds or, you know, not fall out of beds, have safety railings. And that is what Gracie has. So that she can run with confidence. (laughs) Ooh, she got a new pine tree in here, too. It smells smells delicious. If there was smell-o-vision. I'm going to let her down gently because Gracie loves to um, try to fly. She wakes up every morning. Eternal optimist. Believing that she can fly. Help her. (laughs) You going to go, Gracie? You showing off? Hi, honey. Yeah. Are you such a good runner? You're such a good girl. Good job. She's like, did you bring my breakfast? Because uh, I just did some work. (laughs) Hold on, Gracie. I'm going to come see you. But you can see, yeah, this is her. She can be anywhere in the front. And these walls are here. Just And she is an eternal optimist. Oh, Tristan says that it looks like a playground. (laughs) That's really lovely. Thank you, Tristan. She does really like her spot. Actually, I set up the thing. You guys want to see her heated year? Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a right there. I'll step right There's up. Someone. Thank you. So, yeah, you can see it's built for her. Oh, here's her little water dish in case. <laughs> Harmony, she will not ever fly. She jumps a lot. Here is her heated yurt. Jump up that high so she's safe. And then who's that? Who's that lady? Is that Grace? Hi, Grace. You're such a good girl. So yeah, she sits here. That's Maeve. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they'll chat back and forth. But yeah, Gracie can be anywhere she wants in this entire enclosure. Um, But like we said, she usually chooses to be right. So thank you guys for tuning in um, every morning 
And we know this is a challenging time for everyone. So um, we're glad that we can, um, for doing this work. It's been challenging for us too, but we're so grateful that you're here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Bye you. guys.